morning all right guys day number 28 30 days of strength on the darebee.com website that i've been completing for over 30 days now but it don't matter because i've been working at it <laughs> and i'm all about completion uh, so today focuses on tendon strength there are five different exercises and you guys remember these before these little movements that you really feel very impactful so um, everything is 30 today, okay? 30 count hold, 30 side leg raises, 30 straight leg swings, 30 fast kicks, and 30 slow kicks. Change legs after once the set is done and repeat it again. Keep your leg off the floor throughout the sequence. Keep your leg off the floor throughout the sequence. Well, I know they're not talking about the bottom leg because how would you do that? And his is on the floor. He's talking about the top leg. Keep it from resting. And so, all right. Well, we about to do this. And today I'm focusing on listening to a prayer. I just feel like, and I know I need to focus on my gratitude and just praying and you know, and this is a, a low impact workout um, that we're really going to feel. So it allowed me to just be present and, and feel God around me. And, you know, there's, you know, life's good. Don't get me wrong. Life is wonderful. Um, you have your good, you have your challenges. And um, you got to be thankful and grateful through them all because it could always be worse. Um, always be worse in the pursuit of health, wealth, happiness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, so we are going to actually keep this bad boy down here with us. Um, so this is starting off with the leg, 30 second leg count. So um, is this hair on the floor? It is. I was looking for this hair when I was doing Ava's hair the other day. I was combing her hair out and I'm like, where did that bushel of hair go? <laughs> Found it. Mm. All right. And again, guys, this is a 30 second leg hold. Get this chair out of the way. All right. Am I in there? No, I want to kind of be in the camera still too. <laughs> I think you guys will see me better this way for this particular exercise. Okay, my leg right here. My vision's poor, so I can hardly see. All right, thirty second leg hold, and okay, so. They don't have a timer on here. So how would they? I think I have one on my laptop, so bear with me guys while I get one. And tote, what is this? All right guys, so would it be with my calculator or what is no, it's not with the calculator. I'm trying to think. <clears throat> Timer, 10 seconds. It's so funny. They have timers on uh, Google. Uh, so we're going to start it at 40 seconds. I just typed in timer in Google. Timer popped up right on the Google search page. <laughs> I could just put in the amount of time. Awesome, huh? <laughs> so again, we're gonna start off at the 40 seconds and we're gonna do the leg hold from there. So let's get our motivation on, which is again, it's blessed and encouraging morning prayers. Start your day in God's presence. 
What's the name of this YouTube video? Let's go. Second Corinthians 10 verses three through five. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This is one of those passages of scripture that really puts things into perspective. The Bible is telling us here that although we live in this world, we do not and we should not fight our battles like the world. In fact, the weapons that we have available to us aren't physical weapons. But note how the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. The weapons we can access as children of God have divine power. They are weapons unlike anything in this world because they are heavenly weapons. And at the mention of the word weapons, people usually think of the physical weapons in this world like a bat or a gun. However, the Bible says in Hebrews 4, verse 12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is one of the weapons that we have as children of God. It's a weapon that is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is a weapon that you can use against the devil. It's an effective weapon against the devil. In Ten more. So what does the Bible mean when it says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Well, as a believer, you're not fighting people. You're not just fighting circumstances. No, no. You're fighting the spirit behind the person, the devil behind the situation. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is what the Bible says in Ephesians 6, verse 12. So here's what we're doing today. We're going to pray for victory in all areas of our lives. Mm. Believe that God will break every plan of the enemy. Trust that the Lord will have the final say in all matters concerning you. Amen. The conflicts you face, the battles you face. Leg swings, the Lord 30. Has the final say over all of that. So I encourage you, people of God, to trust God. Trust in the word of the Lord. Trust in his promises. And you will have the victory. And with that understanding. Let us pray. Lord Jesus. We look to you today. Concerning all things. We honor you. And we reverence your holy name. Only you deserve the glory God. Only you deserve my honor and my praise. My prayer today, Lord, is that you would fight for me. Fight my battles, Lord. I believe that every setback sent from the enemy will be a setup from you, Lord. You will use that which the enemy plotted to be my downfall. And you will turn it around to be a blessing for me. In Jesus' name. In you, Father, I find strength. The strength and protection needed for every battle. When I look back over my life, Lord, you have been faithful. You have saved me and kept me from everything that has come to hurt me and to destroy me. It's only by your grace and mercy that I'm still here, that I'm still able to lift my voice that I'm able to lift my hands and able to thank you for your kindness and your protection.
it's because of you, Lord Jesus, that I have survived every attack from the devil, every one of them, which was intended to hurt me. I rebuke, cancel, and destroy every assignment, every plot, and every attack of the enemy over my life and over the lives of my family members. Amen. Lord, I am placing my faith in your word, your word that is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm holding on to your word that says in 1 John 5, verse 18, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. You, my God, are my keeper. And according to your word, the devil cannot touch me. I thank you, Lord, for such protection. Father, your word says in Psalm 18, verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. There is no greater Savior that boy. than in you, King Jesus. There is no other way for victory than you, Lord. Your name is a strong tower, and I run to you. Lord Jesus, you alone 30 fast can deliver me from all of my struggles. You alone can deliver me from every stronghold and everything that seeks to stop my spiritual growth. Your word says the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. I praise you for your word and its promise, the promise to protect me from the evil one. Protect me from all of the traps that he sets. Protect me from all of the schemes of the devil. God, I thank you for being faithful. You, Lord, are a faithful God. In the name of Jesus, there is no weapon forged against me that will prevail. In the name of Jesus, I refute every tongue that speaks evil against me. Father, everything that seeks to disturb the peace in my mind, everything that seeks to destroy the peace in my spirit, I ask today, Lord, that you remove it and let it be placed far away from me. Protect my peace of mind, Lord. Protect the peace within my soul, Lord. When life presents me with situations and circumstances that are difficult and that come to test me, I pray that you would give me the grace to overcome. God, I pray that you would give me the strength to overcome. By faith, I will turn to you for guidance. By faith, I will trust in you for the victory. Even when I don't see 30 slow kicks. So I pray that in my life, faith would reign instead of fear. God, help me to overcome feelings of confusion and worry. And instead, give me the assurance, the belief that no weapon formed against me will prosper. May you be my load bearer. May you be my resting place, Lord Jesus. May you be my rescue. And Lord, help me not to succumb to the tricks of the enemy. I will stand on your word that says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 18, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. I ask that your presence would be with me always. I bless your holy name and I thank you for hearing my prayer. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. There is
there is something about stillness. And I believe that this verse is calling us to be still before the Lord because we need to direct all of our attention, all of our focus on the Lord. And if you really think about it, when the Bible says, be still and know that I am God, it's really telling you to stop everything you're doing. Stop worrying. Stop fighting. Stop resisting and start yielding to God. Start listening to God. You see, when you spend time getting to know the Lord, when you spend time in the presence of Jesus Christ, you will truly be transformed. And I encourage you to desire and hunger for these types of rich encounters in the presence of God. Because it's only in those one-to-one -one intimate encounters that each of us can get a personal revelation of who God truly is. It's only in those one-to-one -one intimate encounters that each of us can be empowered and filled with courage. The courage to face the world and stand up for Christ. The courage to stand up to the devil and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. The prophet Isaiah received a revelation that should inspire all of us to recognize God for who he truly is. Listen carefully to what Isaiah 45, verse 2 to 7 says. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. This is a wonderful revelation of just who God is. God is firmly in control. God is all-knowing. God is almighty. Isaiah 45, 22 to 23 says, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. In those moments where we are still before God, we need to realize just how mighty God is, just how powerful God is. The Bible tells us there is no one and nothing that can be compared to God. We need to remember this. Nothing and no one is worthy to be competing for the number one spot of your heart. God should be first. Now let us pray. Dear Lord, I worship you because you are the God who makes crooked places straight. You are the God who can move mountains, and you certainly deserve all the honor and praise. Lord, your word says in Isaiah 45, verse 22 to 23, Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself. The word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. I am looking to you, King Jesus. I am looking to you to transform my life. I am looking to you, King Jesus, to save my soul. I am looking to you, Lord, as my Redeemer and Messiah. 
There is none like you, Father. No one can be compared to you. Help us to be still and know that you alone are God. Help us to have a sacred commitment to spend time alone with you. Let it be a daily desire that we seek to spend time alone in your presence. Holy Spirit, I ask that you help me to make prayer and reading God's word a priority in my life in the midst of a busy world. Keep our lives from controlling us. Help us to keep our relationship with Jesus Christ a priority. Holy Spirit, I ask that you never give up on us. Don't stop convicting me and pulling me in the direction of the Lord. Help me to set my eyes and affections on heaven. John 14 verse 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me to seek God's presence on a daily basis. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Under your guidance, Holy Spirit, I pray that I may begin to grow spiritually and in faith. I pray that I may grow in knowledge. Help me to grow as a believer and become spiritually mature. Holy Spirit, help me to grow in my knowledge of God and of his ways. Help me to grow each day as I meditate upon the living word of God. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 25, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. Revive me, Lord. Revive my spirit and refresh my desire to chase after you. Revive my spirit so that I may be alert and sensitive to your presence, King Jesus. Lamentations 3 verse 25, the Bible reads, The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. I will wait on you, Lord Jesus. I will wait on you with an expectant heart. I pray that the Holy Spirit will create a fire in me that burns brightly for the things of God. A fire that burns for Jesus Christ. You are number one in my life, King Jesus. You are the king of my heart. May you be exalted. Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my back. May your word guide me always. May it lead me and teach me your ways. I thank you for hearing this prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. If you look at the state of world affairs, there's a lot of uncertainty, and these are precarious times we're living in. You turn on the news and on any given day, and you will find there seems to be a constant flow of reports about a natural disaster, an act of terror, or violence somewhere. Should you listen to the so-called experts? They tell you of a new outbreak, a new healthcare scare. A new threat emerging from some part of the world. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 6 to 8, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So as Christians, how are we to take this information in? How are we to navigate through the coming months? 
because a lot of people will naturally be fearful. They will be fearful because you're looking at the facts and numbers. You're looking at the headlines. But I want to tell you that you should be looking at God. What does the Bible say? What advice or guidance can we get from the Bible regarding how we should navigate this reality that we face? The first thing you need to do is not to fear. And you may ask me, how is it possible not to be afraid in desperate times like these? How is it possible to be glad and rejoice and be at peace when the world looks to be falling apart? Well, you need to look to Jesus Christ. And if you look to his word, you will find that over and over again, we're told not to fear. We're told not to be afraid over and over again throughout the Bible. The words may be different, but the message is the same. Do not fear. Do not worry. Be anxious for nothing. Regardless of what the headlines say, despite the expert opinions out there, the main thing I want to tell you is that you should not be fearful. You ought to be careful, yes, but never fearful. Isaiah 41, verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. These are the sort of scriptures that you and I need to dwell on in order to overcome fear, in order to defeat this crippling spirit. We as children of God need to feed our faith with the word of God. We need to get so full up on the gospel that there is no room for fear. So whatever the coming months may hold, you need to make sure. All right, guys. Day number 28. Done. <sighs> <laughs> telling you those little movements done repetitively but I love it though because I had such bad cellulite I still got the cellulite here but the more I work out you know work on my legs and stuff it tightens up my skin and minimizes the appearance of cellulite you know what I mean which is nice <sighs> but I'm a woman so, but it's not what I ain't gonna be tripping about. <sighs> but do something positive today for your mind, your body, your soul. I tell. Right,